Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk Back. My name is Rodney Smith. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at your responses to the question, how do we fund board game media creators? And really it applies to media creators in general. This was important to me because in order to fund our series, I do hold a yearly fundraiser. And there's all kinds of pitfalls with that. Unrealistic expectations, picking appropriate goals, hidden costs that you have to worry about. And it was concerning me. But after I posted the last video, it was like a huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders. I really felt like I was able to express to the people who matter what my concerns were. And then the feedback I got was incredibly helpful. And I can't obviously do justice to all of the wonderful comments in this shorter video. I would highly recommend, if you're a board game media creator, go back and read the comments because there's so much good feedback there. But I am gonna do my best to give you a sampling of some of the comments and just talk about it a little further. Brad Henry suggests, sponsorship from some of the larger game producers may be an option if they see the income you and other content creators generate for them. Well, that's a good point, Brad, and I really do appreciate when publishers hire us to do an instructional video. First of all, it tells me that they value the work that we're doing, and it also means that they wanna support it and see it continue, whether it's for their products or for somebody else's. That said, I do have to be careful that I don't become too indebted to the publishers I'm working with. I feel like that might influence the work that I do. So right now, I have to say, I feel like it's been very successful. A number of the publishers that I've worked with, I've really walked away from the experience feeling like I've developed friendships with these people. And that's, uh, that's almost more meaningful to me than uh, a working business relationship. But um, I, I think it's good that right now the majority of my funding comes from the people who watch our show, uh, your, our viewers. Alexander Grifford says, I prefer the one-time donation over the Patreon style. I have to say a number of people agreed with Alexander and I'm actually one of those people as well. I think Patreon is an interesting method and it can work with some formats of shows and podcasts. I'm not sure that it's a good fit for us. For me personally, an ongoing payment multiple times during the year just feels too much like a bill. And I have enough bills and I don't wanna add more bills to other people. I think I prefer the one-time payment support. Jason Hill writes, for perks, I want to watch it play Dice Tower or draw a string bag for tokens. Well, I have avoided this in the past. That is giving out tangible goods. A lot of things I've given out are not like digital giveaways or producer credits, playing games online, that sort of thing. The reason I've avoided it is because you can chew up a lot of your funding just in postage expenses. And I don't feel like that's necessarily very respectful of your donations if I'm just turning around and spending it right away. However, there is some indication that you can raise more money by having something tangible to give away. So what I want to do this year is give away something really cool, exclusive, unique, and hopefully a, a special memento basically for donators to have as a, as a keepsake of their support for our series. I am gonna to try to keep these things very small and minimal so that, again, the shipping costs are very low and won't really chew into our funding. And if it doesn't work out, well, then I'll have learned something, but it's really hard to know in advance without trying it first. Just last night, Seth Jaffe, the designer of Eminent Domain, a game we featured on our series, reached out on Twitter to people because he wants to work on a print and play game that we can give away as part of our fundraiser. I didn't ask for this. This is something that Seth offered, and I have to say, I was really blown away. I thought that was fantastic. So I'm hoping that, in addition to some of the things I'm dreaming up, other people are coming up with stuff, too, that we're gonna be able to throw in, and I hope make this fundraiser really special. Scott King does a wonderful job creating these really fantastic board gaming calendars. He reached out to me as well. I have lots of cool things I can't wait to announce, but I am gonna wait, because I think it'll be more fun to do that closer to the fundraiser. Sir Fluteboy02 says, I find that donating is rewarding for the donor because I know that my money is going to a cause I really believe in. I don't really care much about stretch goals, perks, etc." Well, I must say, I am glad to hear you say that, despite the fact that we may have a few giveaways and perks in this fundraiser as well, because I never feel I never really feel good about the idea that someone's donating to us for the perks themselves because I don't feel like you're getting your value in that case. You know, a couple of cards or um, a producer credit. For what you're donating, it's a very small gift that I'm giving you in return. My hope is that really people are donating for the sake of seeing the series continue and then the little perks are things that I can throw in there on top of that as an added bonus. Jonathan Lee writes, I think one of the biggest things is that if I don't get in on your Indiegogo or Kickstarter, I don't really have a means of supporting you financially later. 
But if you were using something like Patreon, then I would have been supporting you months ago. Well, this raises a really good point because of course we might get new viewers just after our fundraiser has finished. But I am of two minds about this. I'm not really sure I want people donating to our series who are brand new to it. I would prefer that someone has been watching for a little while first and then based on the merits of the series and their commitment to it, then want to support it. That said, of course, what if someone's been watching for six months? What about them? Well, I think what I might consider doing this time around is having a select number of the perks available all year round until the next fundraiser so that if you just donate to us directly through PayPal, you're still eligible for some of those perks. It wouldn't include things like the producer level credits uh, where at the end of our videos we have listings of people who've donated during our fundraiser. But maybe some of the giveaways, some of those things I would consider leaving open all year round. My neighbor is mowing his lawn. I decided to relocate. <laughs> Ralph Hodge writes, if monetary support is not an option for someone, what other ways can we support your work? Well, what an excellent question. First of all, subscribing to our YouTube channel, following us on Facebook and on Twitter. All of these ways are helpful. First of all, it gives me additional ways to communicate with you, let you know about upcoming releases for videos, possible delays and that sort of thing. But also, for publishers and designers looking to partner with us, it gives them a better sense of the scope of our audience, which is of course important to them. Contacting publishers directly is a huge help. If you've watched one of our videos, if it has helped you to decide whether or not a game would be a good fit for you or maybe helped you learn how to play it a little easier, letting a publisher know that lets them know that partnering with us was a good idea. I'm not interested in artificially inflating our numbers, but sharing videos with your friends can be helpful if it's gaming related. Maybe you're having a game night and you want to play Keyflower, but nobody knows how to play. Sending out the videos to your friends so you can all learn it in advance maybe helps someone discover our channel who wouldn't have otherwise checked it out. Now the insects are just eating me alive out here. Hopefully this location's a little better. The other thing you can do, of course, is leave comments on our videos. I really enjoy putting the videos out there, but it's especially nice to feel connected to the larger gaming community. And when I have an opportunity to interact with you guys online, that certainly makes that more real for me. Daniel Pommy Friday writes, your wife is awesome, by the way, for supporting your dream. Some of those donations should go towards taking her out to dinner or a nice weekend. <laughs> well, Daniel, when you support Watch It Played, basically what you're doing is helping to pay me a salary. Some of that money will, of course, go back into the show buying upgrades to equipment, the set, that sort of thing. Some of the games that I purchase, going to Gen Con. I would like to mention that if you see me going on different trips, those are ones being sponsored by other people. Gen Con is the one trip a year that I make that's gaming related. I feel like spending money on other trips would not be a good use of the money that we are receiving here from our fundraisers. That said, the whole point of making the fundraiser is so that I can contribute financially to my family at a value that makes sense for me to be doing Watch It Played full time. So, some of the money that I receive certainly will go towards doing nice things for my wife. Talon Striata writes, your production values have increased over the years, but I would still contribute even if your set still looked like the Incredible Hulk decorated the place. My favorite YouTube comment recently was someone who said, it looks like you shot this video from inside of the Hulk's pants. <laughs> It's true. I had never really thought about it that way. But one of the things I am trying to do over time is make small improvements as it makes sense, whether that's better video, better audio, better sets. What's most important to me, though, is that the same spirit and intention and reason for Watch It Played existing still comes through in the videos and that that's the part that you connect to. The Evil Jade asks, can you do a small Kickstarter campaign, $500 or less, as well as your Indiegogo campaign? It's just that I do most of my crowdfunding on Kickstarter. I actually considered running the fundraiser entirely on Kickstarter, but then I discovered that as a Canadian Kickstarter, I would not be able to offer you, the backers, the Amazon payment plan option. You'd have to enter your payments manually. At least that's what I understand. So in that case, there's not really any particular benefit that I can see, except maybe exposure. But to be honest, well, as Tom Vassell pointed out, Will Wheaton did pretty good on Indiegogo. But even still, I'm not sure that I really want people just donating willy-nilly to us who don't really know about our content. I know that seems crazy. Why would I not want money from people? But I really want the support to come from people who know about our series and believe in what we're doing. So I figure 
If you watch our videos, you'll hear about our Indiegogo campaign when I talk about it, and then you'll find our backer page. Couple versus Cardboard writes, there are a lot of random costs to creating media content. Having someone who likes what you're doing drop even $5 once a year is surprisingly helpful. That is so true. If there's something I can get across to people potentially backing who are thinking, ah, $5, what does that matter? It really matters. Of course, it's really exciting to see a big donation, but the, the nicest thing really is to see a lot of people interested in supporting no matter how much. And it really does then share the burden across several people to reach those fundraising goals. Seattle Searching 13 says, I would suggest designing watch it play generic play mats. You know, the problem with play mats, t-shirts, mugs, and those sorts of things is that you end up paying a lot of money to the manufacturer of the product and then to the post office when you go to ship these things. Because remember, we have backers from all over the world, so that can get quite expensive. So I've been hesitant about doing these kinds of products in the past. That said, I have been talking with somebody about possibly doing something in a cost-effective way around that idea you were suggesting, so we'll see how it plans out. But in the past, this is the reason why I have avoided doing this. Bo Roadbush writes, one of the perks I wouldn't mind seeing is an opportunity to play a game with you at Gen Con. Well, first of all, thank you for the interest. That's really nice. And I did do that uh, for one of the fundraisers, and it was a lot of fun. But it is a little challenging to coordinate, especially because Gen Con is so chaotic and there's so much going on. That said, if I'm there and I'm available and you're available, I'm happy to play whether you've donated or not. And I think that's probably the way I need to keep it. In the last fundraiser, I did do some online gaming perks. And even that's been a little bit of a challenge to coordinate. And I, I don't want people to think who've donated that it's, it's, um, it's a burden for me to do this. I, I just feel bad I haven't been able to do it more efficiently or more uh, regularly. So I think in this fundraiser, I'm going to avoid adding those on as well, at least until I've completed the ones from the previous year. Cam1138A says, I promised if there was no more wrapping, I'd double my support from last year, and I'll make good on that. Well, Cam, for you, I promise, no wrapping. Unless someone's willing to triple their donation, and then the wrapping's back on. Keith Collins wrote in with a very lengthy and helpful email about his philosophy on supporting different media creators. And Keith has been watching our series for a long time. He also goes by Imagine Function, And he's an ardent and outspoken supporter of a number of different podcasts and media creators like ourselves. So his input was very valuable to me. One of the things that he mentioned, though, is, you know, and this is, like, again, I think is a good tip for everyone, is you want to ask for donations nicely. <laughs> and don't try to hold your show hostage. You know, this is something that we really do have to be careful about. You know, I talk about we need to, to reach our fundraising goals in order for there to be a, a season four of Watch It Played. And that's true, but I really don't want people to get the impression that what I'm doing here is saying, you better donate or you won't be able to watch our content anymore. It, it's more that uh, I'm trying to speak to the reality of the situation, which is that it's, it's not fair to my family if I'm doing this show and I'm not able to continue to make uh, a little bit more money each year until the point where the show is sort of self-sustaining. But that said, the risk is mine. This is a decision I made to try to do Watch It Played full time. It's, it's not your responsibility. I'm not entitled to your donations. I just feel privileged, honestly, that people have considered in the past supporting our series. And I do hope that will continue but I certainly don't take it for granted. Pete Sheary writes, your show has saved me money over the years by providing information that helps me make good decisions on what games are a good fit for me. We won't talk about how many games you've gotten me to buy just in case my wife is reading. <laughs> I would gladly buy one less game per year and throw 30 to $50 at any fundraiser you decide to do. First of all, I really do sincerely hope that the videos we create provide in some way a service to the gaming community, whether that's helping you learn the games a little more easily or just helping you decide this game is or is not a good fit for me. So Pete, I really do appreciate comments and feedback like that. The Penske File wrote, a strange thing I've noticed about YouTube channels that focus on board game content is that they seem much more disturbed by the idea of running ads than other channels do. If you're afraid of upsetting people with those ads, just remember that the most anti-ad folks are probably already running ad block software anyway. Crawchuck wrote, you should turn on ads. They are not annoying enough that you should cheat yourself any amount of income. And no matter the amount, it would not stop me from pledging what I could through a Kickstarter campaign. And Clement Chung wrote, for people who would like to donate but cannot, which includes me, unfortunately, turning on the ads gives us an opportunity to contribute. The majority of the comments I received around ads suggest that people are not against me turning them on at least to experiment and see what kind of a difference that would make. And I, I do appreciate getting that feedback. 
because I really didn't want to risk losing viewers. Now, Benedictus says, I really hope you'll never put ads on your videos. To me, it is annoying, especially that some videos have ads even inside the video. I have yet to see an ad pop up in the middle of a video. I think that that comes when you sign up for one of these marketing networks, not necessarily through YouTube itself, but I am not 100% sure. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my fundraiser goal for this year and then have as a stretch goal, if we reach this level of funding, then there really is no need for me to turn the YouTube ads on, so I won't. But if we don't, then maybe this is something I'll try this year and then we can collectively together see whether or not this was a good idea. One last thing I'd like to mention before I sign off here is maybe one out of 2,000 comments I'll get around the fundraiser will be someone asking, why are you looking to raise so much money? Well, something to keep in mind is that Indiegogo is going to take their slice in terms of a fee. PayPal is going to take a certain amount. There's going to be postage related to things that get mailed out. And the government is going to tax everything that we make. So that's part of the reason why our fundraiser amounts are what they are. Now, all of that said, and all the unknowns aside, wow, do I ever consider myself fortunate that I have been able to do Watch It Played for three years, thanks to my wife, thanks to you guys, thanks to publishers. I have been able to, virtually at the very least, be a part of your gaming community, your experience of the hobby, and that is really an incredible thing. I've said it before, if you follow me, I apologize, you'll hear me say it again and again, but thank you. I really, really appreciate that I have been able to do this series for such an enthusiastic and encouraging audience. I truly am very thankful, and I, I hope you know that. But before I go, I want to leave you with two fantastic video responses from longtime contributors to our Table Talk series. And until the next episode, thanks for watching. The way you've got to look at it is your contributors are thanking you. Let's take me for example. I have been a long time Batalite. And I wanted to contribute to Tom when he uh, quit his job, his full time job, to go full time Dice Tower. But at the same time as contributing, I wanted to thank him. I, I didn't feel that I was thanking him enough by liking his videos and leaving him comments and sending me an email saying thank you for all your hard work and stuff. I wanted to thank him another way and the way that I could express that is with money to keep him going, to keep him working and that's the way you should look at it. There are people out there who love what you do, who admire what you do and they want to help you do what you do because you are helping this community immensely with your body of work and however you recuperate the money whether it be through the adverts or Kickstarter or any other kind of crowdfunder and no I'm not calling from the paradise paradise so don't expect Chaz to come into my video um, no this is work in progress as you can see as a YouTube creator myself I use the um, monetization with the adverts um, let's just say that in three years I haven't received a penny but that's maybe because I don't have many people following me. So all I can say, Rodney, is whatever you do, people are going to love you for it, okay? So I'd like to say a big thank you <coughs> to you, Rodney, for all your hard work. <coughs> and um, thank you for making me buy lots more games. And um, um, maybe one day I'll get around to sponsoring you. <laughs> He's not going to put this in his video, is he? Basically, my view is other than the obvious that you so enjoy the content is, of course, sincerity. Why? Um, because, let's be honest, most people are not blind. They can tell when someone's in it for themselves. Um, you know, channels that basically jump on the bandwagon. They um, make videos and all because they think they can become famous, they think they can make money off it and stuff like that. And that's how in contrast you got Watch It Played, you got Dice Tower, um, Shut Up and Sit Down, Rado, just to name a few which I do support because they are sincere. And just to give a quick example of this, um, I painted this. This is Joe Diamond from um, Mansions of Madness, the miniature. 
I painted this as, and I call him Rodney Smith, and backstory quickly, is that he wanted to be a rapper, but then he became a Cthulhu investigator, such as life. Um, you know, I painted it up, and because of Rodney Smith, because of he, he did the Manchester of Madness playthrough, so I did it, and I just sent it to him, not expecting a reply, um, because I can't even believe that, you, you know, the time taken to reply all the Facebook followers and Twitter followers and everybody must take a lot of time. And guess what? He did reply, and that's something you can't fake when you can put so much of that time into making more videos and all. He, put, he puts the time into replying me and saying thank you very much and all and that's the kind of sincerity and appreciation that is heartfelt because you know he's not doing this because it's profitable because just now we go into the how do you support them and I'll openly say I give just five dollars from the last Indiegogo for Watch It Play judge me as you will um, but here's the thing he will still reply me he still, he still appreciates and that's sincerity for you and Another way I support all the other channels I talked about is just through word of mouth. I, when people ask me, example, oh, I want to learn how to play a game, watch it play. Um, it, I, do, do you want comedy with a review? Shut up and sit down. Do you want an honest review, a truly honest review? Um, Tom Vassal, The Dice Tower, for example, or a man, see how to play the game for one turn and all. That's Rado. You know, all these things, basically. And so basically that's how and why I will support channel and on top of that um, Rodney please do some war games thank you